Sunday. Sunday, November 3rd, 2024. Another beautiful day here in London, Alabama. And I'm going to get right down to it. Uh, this is going to be a wild message. A wild message is coming out of my lips today. Uh, because these are wild and crazy times that we are living in here in America. I want to read a little bit from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 3, which says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. This is a statement about the times that we're living in on this third day of November in the year 2024. Verse 4 says, And they will turn away their ears from the truth. Mm. Turn, their, turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. These times in which we live are times in which people by and large have turned their ears away from the truth. And so my commission and my command is to preach the word and to be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort. And that's what I'm going to try to do today. This is going to be a wild message. And I'm going to title this message the 2024 presidential election. I open this message by answering a question. The question is, what is the church? What is the church? The church is a body of baptized believers who are associated with each other in the faith and in the fellowship of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is what a church is. It's not a building. The church is a body. The church is not an organization. The church is an organism. One not a black church, not a white church, but a church that Jesus purchased with his own blood. And he said, upon this rock, upon the truth of my identity, upon my being the son of God, upon this rock, I build my church. Now, there's a lot of churches out there that Jesus didn't have nothing to do with. But uh, I want to preach, teach the church that Jesus built. And in this day and time and month that we live in, this third day of November 2024, I must tell you that it is quite likely that I will not see another presidential election, given my age. 
We have presidential elections here in the United States every four years. I've seen many of them. Uh, when President John Fitzgerald Kennedy was shot to death and assassinated, I was just a high school student. When Vice President Lyndon Johnson was in office as president, Lyndon Johnson was president, and by some stroke of divinity, I was an invited guest at the White House, eating chicken, standing up next to the president's wife. And I do not uh, seek to satisfy any ego ambitions in this message. When you're a graduate of the University of Maryland at College Park, all of your ego needs are satisfied. But yes, I was invited to the White House and I went there. If you don't believe me, here's what you can do. You can get from the Lyndon Baines Johnson Library a copy of the 1968 President's Youth Opportunity Conference Program. It was held at the Washington Hilton Hotel. And you look in the last page of that program booklet, you will find my name and address. And if you need additional corroboration, uh, you can contact me by, <coughs> by email regarding or requesting a letter that I received uh, from Vice President Hubert Humphrey, the late Vice President of the United States, Hubert Humphrey of Minnesota. I say all of this to say that in just two days, we the people of the United States of America are uh, in this upcoming election on the 5th of this month, if two days away, we in America will tell planet Earth what kind of people we really are. And I know that Russia, China will be watching closely to see who win the election, along with other uh, leading countries all over planet Earth. And this, I believe, is the message that we must send to all the nations of the world. This is the message that I believe we should send. We should choose the plan and person of Vice President Harris. And I believe we should reject the plan and person of Donald Trump. So I reprove and rebuke Donald Trump and I exhort Vice President Harris, and I want her to just keep on keeping on. Uh, I want to show you something here that has caused a real mess in the political process. And it didn't just start with this election. I have here a college level statistics book published in we were 19 and 89. I will say this. 
as I read the political climate here in America, I'm reading an impending landslide victory by VP Harris. But here's the problem. Problem is with a polls, a polling organization. And I'm convinced, based on this book, that the polls are for sale. And I published this section in my ex account and on Facebook, but I'm just going to read here a little bit of information about people that publish these polls. Now, there are polls out that say that the race is neck and neck. That, uh, Harris and Trump are tied. A few polls put Trump a little bit ahead. A few polls put, well, I haven't seen any lately that put Trump ahead, but there's some that say that they're tied, but many of them say that Harris is ahead. Let me tell you about these polls. These polling organizations, when this book I'm reading from was published, these polling organizations charged their clients about $2 billion, with a B, $2 billion for their services annually. $2 billion in 1988 or 1989. Today, that $2 billion, given inflation, is $4,931,252,000.53. That's the kind of money that the polling organizations rake in and they stir and muddy the waters and blur or cause a blur in the impending landslide that Vice President Harris will uh, enjoy. Uh, now let me move further and tell you about the story of the angels. This is not a biblical story. This is a theological axiom. But there were several angels that lost their job and got fired by God uh, after God closed the Red Sea and drowned Pharaoh's army. Those angels were rejoicing, saying, yeah, we got them. Yeah, we got them. Look at them. Drowning. We got them. The story says that God spoke to those angels and said that you are permanently relieved and discharged from my service because those people that are drowning in that Red Sea, they are my children. And you don't rejoice when my children are being drowned. And that's what I want to say to all the Democrats. When Donald Trump go down, we must not rejoice we must refrain from celebrating Donald Trump's victory because he too is a child of God. And the church has an obligation 
It's all right to celebrate our victory, but it's never all right to celebrate any downfall uh, of any person, no matter how much wrong he or she has done, no matter how many lies they have told, no matter how many crimes they have committed, no matter how many charges in courthouses that they have uh, been into, there's still hope uh, for all children of God as long as they have breath. And even after that, we are not on good ground as a church. We are not on good ground to celebrate their downfall. This body of baptized believers are, uh, we say that we believe that we have been led by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. And we say on perfection of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of angels, in the presence of God in this assembly, we most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body, not as one organization, but as one body, as one organism in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church, strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, in holiness, and comfort, to promote the church's prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine and to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, to the expense of the church, and the relief of the poor. To spread the gospel throughout all nations. This is the deal that we cut with each other as one body in Christ. And we engage to maintain family and secret devotions to religiously educate our children, uh, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, and to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our uh, deportment. We engage and pledge to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use huh, of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. In this presidential election, there is a tie that binds our hearts together in just a, two more days. We will go and show the world what kind of people we really are. And I have every confidence that we will shine as a city upon a hill 
under the guidance and protection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Presidential election 2024. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling. And he's able to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. And he's able to do it with exceeding great joy. Now unto him. The only wise God. To whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Both now, henceforth, and forevermore. God bless the tie that binds our hearts. Christian love. Goodbye.